no, it's muted. So you need to put this like that. I think. Nope. I don't. Yes. Can you close the doors? Thank you very much. So anyone that knows some history of Rust is going to be very excited about this talk, and Raki is going to tell us about what's going on with Rust with uh, Servo. Hello, hi, thank you. I am Raki, and I'm a software engineer. I work on Servo at Igalia. Um, before even I start with the talk, I'm very curious about the audience. Like, how many of you are writing Rust as professionally or like you know full time okay many of you and how many of you are writing like maybe personal project interest okay how many of you are coming from front end or back end world i still see some hands perfect this is like perfect audience for this talk actually <laughs> so good um normally when i start a talk i tell about the project i'm going to talk about right but today i want to start by answering some questions because people have questions <laughs> <laughs> What is happening, right? Is, is it bad? Is it a lie? What is happening with server project? So um, I'm simply going to take you a bit back and walk you through uh, server's journey in this slide around 2012. It started at Mozilla Research around the same time when Rust project also started. Uh, they were quite working together, actually. Um, and people who have been acting active in Rust community or have known about server project, they knew uh, server around 2016, 17, 18, what was happening. But, the, but in my previous slide, right, uh, like this slide, these questions came in when we were in 2020. <laughs> like a lot, a lot was happening in 2020, but this also happened when uh, Mozilla's layoff impacted the server team. And uh, this kind of affected the whole team. And the future was not that bright as we thought. Around the same time, uh, Servo Project joined Linux Foundation. There were few people from Servo team who were trying to maintain the project uh, in their personal time. But that is not enough. Servo Project is huge. Um, and that's not enough. It needs funding. It needs more people, expertise, and many other things, right? Um, and around 2022, talks about restarting Servo started, um, but how? Like I, I just mentioned, it needs lots of funding, lots of expertise, lots of people, right? Who is going to start? So in 2023, a team was formed at Igalia, and uh, we restarted the Servo project. So what we did in 2023, uh, like list is not huge, but I want to uh, keep it like small because this is not like really focus of. Uh, the talk today. Uh, we restarted the project first half of the year. We were trying to maintain the project, take it out of the maintenance mode actually, um, tell people what is happening with project and we have restarted uh, the project. Like that's what I, uh, I'm trying to mean there by outreach. Uh, make it easy for new people to contribute because an open source project is literally nothing uh, without the contributors. Uh, we started work on layout engine. We started, uh, we started shipping CSS uh, two uh, features. Uh, we also had to make a choice between uh, layout engine. Uh, we in Servo have two layout engine, or uh, still have it, but we haven't deprecated the last one. Um, we ended up choosing to work on layout 2020. The old one is called layout 2013. I'm not gonna talk too much about it. You can go to the wiki and you can find. Uh, why we took the decision of uh, choosing Layout 2020. Uh, at the end of the project, I have a QR code uh, that will give you access to this slide, so don't worry about uh, searching for it now. Uh, in 2023, we also worked on internal WPT so that we can track uh, the, uh, the test, the web platform tests, and we build lots of server demos because um, when you're talking about a project, right, it is very important to show things. You can't just like <laughs> sit at computer and code and code and talk about we are doing this and that, but there is no way to test it. There is no way. I'm, I'm saying we, we build CSS feature, but hey, how can I test it, right? 
So there were few servo uh, demos before available as well, so we also moved it to the new servo demo website. And then we did quite a lot of embedding work. Um, we built a mini browser that is going to be focus of this talk. Um, this was 2023. I also want to cover what we are going to do in 2024 because it's already here. We are in February. We want to uh, continue the project maintenance and the outreach because some of you, I'm sure, were not sure about where Servo project is going, and I'm sure there are people outside this room who are still not sure, right? So uh, we want to make sure that everyone in community is aware of what is going on. Uh, we want to continue uh, shipping CSS support. Right now, while I'm standing, we still have a few uh, peers open that is um, related to tables. Um, and uh, we are uh, really trying to ship this table support in Servo. Uh, we uh, want to continue working on embedding API and the initial Android support. We already have um, uh, uh, initial build that runs on CI already. We landed this PR, I think, two weeks ago or maybe one week ago. Let's not go with somewhere between two or one week ago, okay? <laughs> Um, but, uh, right, like, if you see, like, the, the list is pretty much similar to what we did in uh, last year, and this embedding, uh, this is the, the, the focus of the talk today, and I am talking about embedding because embedding has been asked from the community for very long. I was just, like, looking on internet, uh, like, Reddit, you know, Hacker News, and just Twitter, GitHub, what is, uh, what are people asking? And I ended up like collecting some things. If you if you see the that screenshot, this servo embedding part was asked 11 years ago, and <laughs> right, this is exactly like uh, kind of what I'm trying to tell you. And um, I'm saying that we can't just like you know tell hey we are adding support to servo uh, or X or Y feature without. Um, without showing you a POC how, how this feature is working or how you as a user can test it, right? So um, last year around the summer when we did lots of uh, maintenance and took it out of like, you know, uh, maintenance mode, we decided we want to work on embedding. Um, and then we ended up uh, uh, building a mini browser actually. And uh, while we were talking about mini browser, like uh, any open source project for the, the first Step is to like, of course, open an issue. That's what I did. <laughs> I opened the issue, um, and we wanted to decide how we want to move. Right? What do we want? Um, which library we want to use? Um, I opened the issue initially, and we had some discussion. The whole idea behind opening the issue was to get comments from the community if they have some suggestions on using libraries. We we already had um, this win it window that we were using in the code base and we thought maybe we can have a quick POC. You don't want to spend years building something without knowing how, how uh, people or how uh, companies or users uh, who is going to use your product going to feel it, uh, about it, right? So we ended up um, building a mini browser. You know, um, I want to show you actually. So... Um, if I go just do a macro, and I hope you can see screen. Yes, um, this is this is like the mini browser. Just just uh, keep a like mental model of how this toolbar is looking because I'm gonna show you some code a bit in a bit. Um, this is about, about this is about like you can just simply play around. Like literally, we did a small thing. How we can um, make your life easy <laughs> as a user. <laughs> Uh, this is the demo website I was talking about. You can just go and do uh, stuff there, check out how um, how uh, some performance are happening. Like we have some demo that talks about the like technical test, and uh, you can test the WebGL support as well. So certain things, right? But anyway, uh, play around, go back, forward, uh, whatever, right? Um, and while we are here, uh, just to give you an idea how this looks in the code, right? Um, depending on what kind of uh, ideas you prefer when you are reading code, I prefer to go from top to bottom and then I take myself up from there. Uh, you want to go to Servo Shell, and once you arrive in Servo Shell, um, you want to look for mini browser. And I can see some code here. 
this like initialization part is okay, but this is like not the focus. If you see the if condition here that we say um, dot get dot mini browser, what is happening here is we we just don't provide an option for you to have the mini browser. We also provide an option for you to disable it. It is enabled by default. So uh, in case like I have to um, show you how it looks, uh, you just need to pause this. And then you can already see how it looks. So you don't have a toolbar. This is the window we also use to test um, how our web platform test is looking, right? Um, and uh, while you are here, right, we also want to uh, look for event loop. That is an important part. Um, not actually run forever. Yes, this this part even loop as like name suggests, it runs forever, right? In this particular case, <laughs> uh, in this particular case for mini browser, uh, we are uh, we want to see this part. We um, are using Winit, so we of course run the uh, event loop of Winit that really helps uh, initialize the Winit window. Um, and as I was saying, I want to. I want you to remember how the toolbar looked like. I want to go to mini browser and um, just show you something that we have going on in the update function. Uh, this particular code, this particular code that I want to walk you through, uh, because this is, this is uh, something that we uh, did. Like, uh, like I was saying, right, we opened an uh, initial um, issue where we wanted to decide what library we, library we want to use. We were already using the Winit to create the whole window. And we ended up using uh, eGUI. They have really good support for eGUI Winit and eGUI Glow. Uh, this was very helpful for input and output stuff we needed to do with um, the mini browser. And as you can see, like there is just two part going on. From left to right, that we had back and forward button on the left and right side. You can imagine the toolbar as two parts, left to right, there was back and forward button. And then the other part was right to left, that was on the right side, you had the go button, and on the left side, you had the location field. And all together, it was a uh, whole toolbar, right? And one other thing that I want to show you is like how we are initializing servo. This is like, uh, I can go to this avenue. This this part is like, in, inside the event loop uh, dot run forever, we are passing all the data to the, to the a new function that initializes the servo. And a lot is going on here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to walk you through all the code because uh, it will take forever. Um, the next 10 minutes is not enough. Um, but uh, like initializing Surfman, creating a, a, a thread for WebGL. But one of the most important thing that is going on here is the configuration of Constellation. So if I have to show you here, um, it should be here already, actually. Uh, here is the constellation. It creates the constellation here. And if I have to go and see how to start constellation, this is the constellation part. This is the grand central of servo. Like, I love this comment. Someone left this comment like 11 years ago, and this is still valid. And from here, you can really get lost in the code because, <laughs> and not lost in a bad way, because this is the place where everything is connected. Here you go to the pipeline, navigation, layout thread, uh, script, um, script thread, and you can like really go to layout and then the script. So, so like from here you can go everywhere. And then um, I was just showing you this uh, code right here. Um, we are on lib.rs, and this is our engine. When you arrive, we call it libservo, and this is the whole engine we are talking about. Um, but I want to like uh, keep it short here now because I want you to see something else as well. Uh, this was about the mini browser that we built, right? And uh, next was around the same time when we uh, were done with mini browser, we were talking with Tauri uh, about how we can collaborate to integrate Servo in the RIBE uh, project they have. And uh, Thanks to the funding we got from NLNet and the collaboration from uh, Tauri team, uh, we did a collaborative work where we embedded Servo um, in Rai. Rai is a library that aims to provide a fully web view, um, 
fully open source web view to users. And this is uh, the screenshot uh, or, or the demo that uh, Rai team built. That is like a hello world from Saru and Rai. Um, if you have questions from, uh, about Tauri and Rai, Daniel is sitting here. You should catch up with him. <laughs> His, uh, yeah, um, he has uh, lots of answers for you uh, on that side. Um, and thanks to my colleague, uh, Dylan for putting it all together so that I can uh, show you today. <laughs> um, but like earlier, earlier when I started this talk, I asked uh, how many of you are coming from front-end or back-end world, right? Uh, I have spent quite a lot of time in my career doing uh, front-end and back-end world uh, work. So when this embedding stuff happened, uh, when we started this embedding, we wanted to, uh, we worked with our team to... Uh, to create this whole uh, task, what, what are needed and what, are not, uh, what is not needed. We shipped off-screen rendering, we uh, shipped pre-compiled Mozangle, we still uh, got to figure out how we're going to do the package and distribution of uh, the shared object we have been creating for two biggest dependencies that is of Servo, that is Mod.js and Mozangle. We shipped the Mozangle shared object already, but yet to, yet to uh, figure out how we're going to do the... Uh, yeah, distribution, right? And Mod.js uh, is still work on progress. We have some work going on on the static lib side as well, so we're going to do that as well. Um, but uh, before I started this talk, right, I, uh, um, uh, for this one, like, I wanted to see how this, uh, as a user, how I'm going to use Rai, uh, how it is going to impact me, right? So uh, I started this. This tells me that I am uh, close to the <laughs> finish. Uh, this is the demo I built uh, on top of Rai. So, um, and behind the scenes, Servo is running, uh, rendering things for you, and Rai uh, integration. This is the result of the integration work we did. So um, just to show you quickly what I had to do in order to uh, run uh, this project, I just had to write this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. That's all. As a user, I don't need to care what is happening on um, uh, on the server side, or what is happening behind the scene in Rai itself. As a user, I just need to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Things are ready. Maybe, uh, maybe you know, uh, <laughs> you can go ahead and try to write an input and browser UI, and maybe you will have something like that, you know? Uh, so it was pretty cool to see that as well. And um, this was like, I, I was personally very happy. The way, uh, one of the reasons why I showed you this issue, and even we have a meta, meta issue for a mini browser, there are some unchecked boxes in case you want to contribute. We'll be very happy to help you review PR or, or help you getting started, right? Uh, this was about like integrating servo rendering engine itself, right? We have another uh, story with Dioxys that is doing pretty unique work by just taking one crate. You might know about this. It is stylo crate for CSS styles and selector matching. So this is something uh, unique because we have been talking about uh, integrating the whole servo rendering engine into a project. But this opens another opportunity where you maybe just want to use the script crate or stylo crate in your project, right? You can simply do that. It is possible, and Dioxys is um, proving it. It is possible. And um, after this whole talk, one question that uh, some of you might have, right? how you can do it, like in your project. Uh, in short, you are literally one step away from um, doing it. And you just need to reach out to us on Zulip Chat. If you have time, you can check out how mini browser is working or how the integration with Rai took place. You can try it out with your applications, with your projects. And if it works, great. If it is not working and you figured that you need us, server team, to implement a particular feature, you can reach out to us on Zulip, or you can open a discussion on Servo, and we will be really very happy to help you uh, get started and um, yeah, uh, answer questions. Because on Zulip, we, we really have lots of people coming in and asking questions like, um, I want to integrate. We have some talks uh, ab uh, about Velo. Uh, we have some talks about like certain other things going on. You can also follow up there, and lots of lots of things happening in Servo. So yes, in short, uh, that's what you are just one step away from uh, reaching out to us. And yeah, thanks for listening to me. Uh, you can scan this QR code uh, to get access to this slide. Thank you.
So unfortunately, there's no time for questions here. Are you? I am. I am uh, here. Please catch up with me. Yes, <laughs> I'm happy to answer your questions. Awesome. May I take the microphone?